Well, I am first and foremost a musician, but I also say that I am a cultural ambassador because <laughs> everything that I do is to support the education of Sephardic culture. So many people today, whether you are Jewish or not, um, they've never even heard of Sephardic culture. They don't even know that such a thing exists. My grandfather was born in Monastir, and for me, it has always been a connection to my grandfather and to all of my family that came before him. In 1912 and 1913, during the Balkan Wars, there were a lot of Sephardic families who left Monastiril. My family went to America, and so my grandfather was very young at the, at the time, and he hopped on a boat with his parents and many other families, and they ended up uh, in New York, in a part of New York called Rochester, which has a large um, population of Jewish families from Monastir. So he was not still in, um, in Monastir when the Holocaust happened. Uh, have you visited Macedonia so far? And did you feel at home when you came? And what do you think about Macedonia's attitude towards Jewish culture and history? I went to Monastir or Pitula for the first time uh, two and a half years ago, and I just, oh, I fell in love. The people were so generous to me and so beautiful and so warm and so um, just open armed to me. And I really saw because uh, I didn't go to Skopje at the time. I was only in Bitsula, and there are no Jews in Bitsula. And all of the people, the non-Jews, knew so much about Jewish history. It was incredible. And they really proved to me that the Jewish history of the city is still very much in like the, the memory and the consciousness of, of the citizens in a way that I was shocked. I was so surprised. I brought 20 Americans over with me the next year because I wanted them to see what I saw. One of my favorite songs is called Chica Morena, and that is about the girl who, the Sephardic girl who has been kicked out of different countries and she's wandering the earth just trying to find her way home and for me that really is like the answer to everything I, I do. I feel like I've spent my whole life trying to understand where I come from and to find my way home and to really understand my, my roots. Did any of your family members survive the Holocaust? Yes, my cousin Rochelle, she's the only one. Um, she just turned 102 years old. She lives wow. in Boston. Yeah. Ah, she lives in Boston now. And she survived the Holocaust by being put in the trunk of a car by um, the, Ita the Italian consulate car trunk and being shuttled to Albania where she was given an, a, a, a new passport, a fake passport, and she lived in Albania during the war to survive. And when the war ended, she came back to Monastir, but there were no Jews, no, no, nobody left. Um, only a couple of people came, came back and it was too sad, so she left. wrote some diary entries and she has beautiful memories that that she will sh that she shares with us when we when we see her she's very very special and she's my last living relative from monastir but one of the stories that i love that she told me was um 
about a little symbol you put on your on your door. It's called mezuzah. It's a little uh, little metal uh, symbol that you put on the door, and inside is a Hebrew prayer, a very important Hebrew prayer for Jewish people. And in every Jewish home, you put one at the at the door to say that you are proud of being Jewish. And during the war, as Rachel told me, her neighbor took the mezuzah to hold on to for Rochelle. She didn't know if she would see Rochelle again, but she saved the mezuzah because she knew how important and how special it was to her. And years, years later, she gave them, she did see Rochelle again and she gave the mezuzah back. Tell us something about your monastery project. What inspired you? Why are you doing it? What is it about? And who is helping you with it? So my idea is to bring Israelis and Macedonians together, Jewish and not Jewish, and to record a brand new album of Macedonian Jewish songs, which <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever done before. I found poetry and words in archives, um, in, in old, old libraries. All of the music on the album, even if it's in Macedonian or in Ladino, will have something to do with Jewish monastir. What's your message for Macedonian teachers regarding the history of the Sephardic Jews from Macedonia and the Holocaust education? Well, keep on doing what you're doing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, I'm always surprised and amazed that uh, that teachers in Macedonia even want to teach this history because what I tell at least Americans is that Sephardic history is world history. It's, it's part of your history. The Jewish people were a very, very important part of Monastir and Skopje and of Macedonian history. And if you want to know about your own culture, you have to know you have to learn about the Jewish story. It's very, very important to your own sense of you know, nationality. And so I applaud, I applaud you for learning about it and for teaching about it. It's so important for everybody in the world to, to know this history. So do you think that Holocaust education is important and that it helps combat another genocide provides students with a consciousness of human rights and raises their awareness about anti-Semitism. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to say we don't need Holocaust education because everybody already knows what happened. And there's so much proof and so much sadness and so many lives lost. And that, you know, with the Jewish experience, the, the entire Sephardic population of Europe was basically destroyed um, and with that you lose a culture you lose Ladino you lose so much history entire cities it's so tragic and I hope that more education will prevent another genocide I think we still have so much work to do for some reason anti-semitism is still such a problem throughout Europe throughout America we still have to teach this history because the same hatred for some reason still still exists. And if only people could see how beautiful the culture is and the historical experience, I, I, you know, I wish we could avoid 
more more genocide. I, I don't know, but I, all we can do is try.